Hi everyone and welcome to episode 29 of Being Youthful. I am Kim Beegler. I am the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill and I am sitting here today in Halsey at the mill. And uh, if you haven't joined us before, welcome. Uh, I'm going to talk about being a yarn maker, farm life, spinning, knitting, all of the things, owning a wool mill. So uh, welcome and if you are returning, thank you so much for returning. You guys, our little subscriber number is ticking up and it's pretty exciting to watch. So thank you so much. Please tell a friend if you love what I'm doing. Um, so Mitch and I just got back and I think I'm, I don't know if I'm crooked. I think I've told you before my building is crooked. So whether I'm crooked or the building's crooked, I don't know. Okay, so Mitch and I just got back from a trip to Central Oregon just to, and Wish just got back from boarding. So she's gonna be on my lap, no doubt. Um, anyway, we just took a little trip for the week over to Sisters, our favorite place, and just hung out. We ate, we slept, we watched crappy TV, and really we just watch home improvement TV shows the whole time so that we get inspired to work on our house. Well, me. Anyway, uh, anyway, it was so great, and we had a wonderful time. We had our two big dogs with us, got lots of walks in with them, and just hung out. And now we're back. And I just had Mary over to the mill. Hi, Mary, if you watch. Um, because I'm teaching her to hand spin on a wheel. So I haven't really taught anybody from beginning to end before. And I'm going to try to do some videos on it for you all. I've taught and helped people along the way. But this is the first time I'm trying to take somebody from a non-spinner into a spinner. And she's determined and I'm determined and we'll get there. So I just did a little quick lesson with her just to get her treadling and um, sent her on her way with a wheel. So we'll meet up again next week and move forward. Um, not a whole lot's been going on. We did plant some trees. We talked about hazelnut trees for the grass seed farm in the last episode. So I have a little bit of video about that to share. Um, that's kind of, we've just been wintering it up. So, um, and the farm is good. The farm animals are good. I have a little tour for you guys with the farm animals. We got home yesterday. And so I grabbed the camera and said, guys, let's all go check in together. Luckily, everybody was there in the right pens. Hadn't lost anybody, nobody had died. So uh, it should make for a nice little tour for you guys. And I think without further ado, we're just gonna go straight into that. So I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Wish says she'll see you soon too. And um, enjoy the animals. Hi everyone, it's farm tour time. We just got back into town within the hour and ate a quick lunch. And now we're going down just for the first time. And here come all the chickens. So I don't have our sitter do their scratch or anything like that. June's actually the only one that gets kibble when we're gone. And you can see the sheep are ready. So this is the first time I'm checking in on everybody. Make sure everybody looks good. Everybody's looking good. June's coming down. I'm not going to give her kibble now, but I'm going to do her feet. There's packets and cuddle bug. <clears throat> These guys obviously have been starving. So I did bring some kibble down for the sheep to make them calm down since been so long so we'll give the chickens some kibble Nigel stayed behind kept kept an eye on things Cash and Elsie got to go with us and they are exhausted all right I'm gonna pause you guys for a minute okay. the sheep are starving obviously oh the babies are fired up for their treats hi guys we missed you Oops. And then I just bonked Elsie on the head. There's the chickens all happily getting their treats. Sort of happily. So let's go say hi. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing I brought a treat with them because, oh my gosh. You would think that they haven't eaten in ages. Everybody looks good. 
which is always nice. Nobody's <laughs> limping or doing otherwise, so that's good. All right, I'm going to feed them. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, everybody's happily eating, which is always good. It means everybody did well while we were gone. June is over there thinking she gets treats now, which she doesn't, but we're going to go do her feet. Okay, back to our old antics. Let's check in on Miss June Bug. Hi, June. How you doing, baby girl? Here's the nose. Here comes Cuddlebug, as always, with hay all over his head. I didn't bring food, guys. It's early. So, everybody looks great. Uh. I've got a little cleanup to do. There's the ladies. What's up, Cuddlebug? What's up? And Miss Junebug is about to get her feet done. And maybe a quick brushing. Huh. All right. You want to say hi, Junebug? Hi, Junebug. All right. I'll be back in a sec and we'll go check for some eggs. Okay, so June is brushed. There she is. Her feet are picked. She's caught up. Cuddlebug, he's doing good. I hear some dogs trying to play out here. Elsie's apparently not tired enough. This is actually her too tired. But Nigel probably missed her a little bit. I'm not going to say a lot. So we're going to go see if there's an egg mess at all. Their playing is always tinged with just a little bit of this could go to shit quickly. <laughs> but usually they're pretty good these days. All right. Put it onward. Check on some chickens just to see. Right as we were leaving, we discovered a spot that they were laying in. There's Dolly. Aren't you guys full? Oh my gosh. Dolly's our loudest. There's Drilla. Alexis, everybody looks good. Obviously. Johnny. All right. Hi, gorgeous. I'm spinning him right now. Okay, let's go check in. Let me grab a basket that I accidentally chucked at Elsie and we'll go see. We didn't tell the sitter to check this one spot, so it could be a total disaster. Or it could be no big deal. We'll see. So I think I, we checked it Monday before we left. Pretty, pretty cool. That's good. Not a mess. One egg. All right, moving onward. Okay, so we're in the coop. Everything looks good. I just kind of topped off feeders and I'm pulling eggs, which you can see our sitter is uh, pulling them, but that is a newbie. Put it in the light. That's one of our new layers, one of our baby eggs. So exciting that we are getting some of our girls, some of our new girls are starting to lay. And you can see the size difference there, pretty drastic. So and we've got one more over here for today. So I'll go wander around and check that everything else is good, but you gotta peek out the back window of the coop. But otherwise, I'm gonna go up and settle back into the house okay guys i hope that you enjoyed that everybody was pretty happy ish to see us i mean I, honestly our cat tabitha was the happiest of every animal we have our small dogs were happy for a minute but tabitha last night i sat down to 
knit for a few minutes and watch some TV before I went to bed. No, I had to hold Tabitha like a baby <laughs> for like an hour. Um, and Wish is pretty excited too, but she may just be excited to be home. Anyway, the farm's doing well. And actually, after I filmed that, I was like, let me go find eggs. Uh, Mitch found like a slew of eggs hidden, 13 or 14 eggs in this little spot that we look at basically every day. <sighs> so anyway, um, we cleaned, basically when we find eggs that we don't know how long they've been there for, we just chuck them. And this was a pile of 14. So sadly we had to check all those eggs and then we put some fresh bedding in. A lot of times I'll leave an egg in there and we'll mark it so we know it's an old one just so that they know that we're not, you know, and uh, we'll see if they keep laying there. It's always hit and miss. Sometimes they'll lay somewhere for a while and then they move onward. And then we have those dedicated chickens that just lay in the box and they just, anyway, um, I've got eggs again. I think I'm going to put eggs back out on the road to sell. So we'll see if anybody needs eggs and you live local, let me know. Okay. So Crusty Farm. It's been, it seems like it's been like so long since I've talked to you guys. I'm one day late, so I don't know. Maybe that's why. Uh, so we did, I think it was right after the last episode, we did start planting the hazelnut trees on the grass seed farm. So now I think all the trees are in. Last I heard, all the trees are in. And so I'm going to have to go before the next episode and get a video to show you guys what everything looks like right now. But um, this video I have that I'm going to share with you guys is the first day uh, Mitch and his dad, Wade, and I are out putting the first trees in. So that was exciting. And yeah, so I have a couple of videos of that to share with you guys. It's pretty fun. So I was debudding the trees and just dropping them in the holes, which means literally like there's little tiny buds on them. You want those all gone. So I was doing that, dropping them in the holes. And then Mitch, uh, well, Wade was following me for a bunch of it. Then we kind of all three were just chugging along until it got dark and the Great Danes were out helping us. So um, we'll just show you guys a little clip of that. And then I'll be back. Here's your grass seed farm update. Day, planting one. Here's a whole, whole flag, different color flags for different pollinators. You can see Wade's out there. He's planting as I drop. Mitch is over there dropping and planting. And basically I'm going along and knocking the buds off of these and they're all color coded and putting these in and these are all of our pollinating ones so that's what we're doing coffee break while well, planting Mitch is planting the regular trees right so I was putting in the pollinators Wade is behind me actually planting them and then Mitch is doing the regular trees that are not pollinators that need pollen how's that First, he's taking a coffee break. Ooh, he looks cute, huh? And his dad's out there. Woo, his dad's got the worst of it right now. Let's see if we can see him. Sun's in my face. Alright, onward. These breaks can't last long. That's what they look like, guys. A stick in the ground. That will in seven years be producing all taste nuts. <laughs> I know you want to see yourself on TV. I do enjoy this is Wade. He's the reason we're doing this right now. <laughs> I don't think I'm this is Mitch's dad. He <laughs> has the envious job of actually planting and cussing me out if I didn't do my job right. <laughs> See, isn't that fun? All right, we'll leave him. I'm gonna go keep, I have to hustle to stay in front. Those ones that are flooded are nice to plant though, huh? The ones that are flooded? Yeah, and they just kind of pop in there. I thought the same thing too. I thought you better throw I'm like, look, I've almost planted it for him. <laughs> All right, onward. Okay, so, Trees go in, then the next thing that happens is you either paint 
like I think it's about half of the base of the tree or you can put kind of a like a white wrap tube around the base of the tree every farm does it different and the idea is that the trees don't get sunburned because interesting because generally these are just like offshoots that are off of trees right and so most of the time those trees are shading these little baby offshoots so when you just when you get these and they're going straight out into an open field they can get sunburned which apparently is not good for the tree so you do either paint up to protect the tree or you wrap it so that i believe has been done and then you stake the tree actually you trim a little bit off the top stake it and then you're done and tie the tree to the stake obviously um and then i think that's all that gets done at this point so anyway the next episode i'll take you guys over to the farm and we can take a peek at what everything looks like and i'll, I'll definitely keep you guys up on this because i know quite a few of you were interested to see how it goes so there you go it'll be new for all of us okay so on to what i have been working on personally which is actually a fair amount. I mean, it's nothing exciting. I don't have anything finished. But I am wearing my beautiful, um, oh my gosh, now I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it on here. It's by Ho Hohi Locatelli. And I'll be honest, I when I finished it, I was like, ooh, it's so, I felt like maybe it was too heavy or it wasn't gonna have the right drape. Um, I knit this with our Primeville yarn and it turns out I love it. I the stack of knits I took over to Eastern Oregon it, or to Central Oregon was it was like it was okay it was out of the picture between the sweaters and the wraps and the hat and the mittens and everything else. So I got to wear so many knits, which was exciting. And this one was one of them, and now I love it. And I'll make sure to put the name of it. I knit it with our Prime Bill uh, with three colors, two naturals, and then one of the dyes. So, anyway. Um. So one thing I have been doing is i said last time i was going to do some gloves with some icelandic yarn and look at this one glove complete i love it and i'm working on the other glove i kind of put it down when i was in sisters for some reason but then i picked it back up last night i was like get cracking lady because i'm already they're so fast so this is the simplest mittens i think is the pattern by Tin Can Knits, it literally is. If you have not knit a mitten, pick up this pattern. The thumb is even, I mean, the thumb is right. You can kind of see there's the little darts for where I'm adding stitches, but even the thumb is easy. So it won't take me, but not anything, to finish the second one. And I'm knitting with Icelandic hand spun yarn because I do want it to, it's going to felt up a little bit. And you can see with the Icelandic, there's hair sticking out everywhere. But it's very, very warm wool. So that's going to be nice. Um, next thing, my sweater. Determined. You guys, I'm determined on this sweater. So here she is. She's not done, don't worry. But we made some serious progress. This is mostly what I knit on, on the trip. So you'll note, two sleeves are done. Two sleeves are done. And... I picked up the stitches for the collar so you can kind of sorry it's on um, I don't want to drop a million stitches so here's one edge of the sweater so basically I had to pick up the whole front the top back and the side there to get it's a cardigan so now I am knitting forever knitting and purling forever eight inches but the good news is after four you get to switch to your bigger needle so anyway this should not be i mean i would love to have this done i know that sounds crazy your average knitter would have it done in two weeks but i'm not always your average knitter so um there she is progress and i'll put in the show notes the pattern and everything um so which is back on my lap so i was also spinning i took one of my wheels with me and did a fair amount of spinning so bobbin number one is complete. There is, of course, a little bit of VM because that's just how it is. So this is Shetland alpaca straight from my farm. I sold out of this pretty quickly when I made a batch of it. I'm going to make some more soon, I think. Uh, maybe not in white, but in something. So Shetland alpaca. And I was spinning and spinning away by the fireplace. My happy place and I thought oh maybe I should talk a little bit about the fiber triangle 
when you're hand spinning. So guess what I did when I came home last night? I made a little bit video about the fire, fiber triangle. And by the fiber triangle, I mean the little, and I'll try to get a picture of it and post it here, the little triangle that forms as it's about to be picked up by your spinning wheel going into the orifice of your wheel. So if you are not a hand spinner, feel free to skip to the next chapter because I put chapters on here now um, to the mill section. But if you're a hand spinner, if you're learning, or if you wanna learn, whatever, it's a pretty quick video where I just talk a little bit about the fiber triangle and how to, um, what it's important about knowing. Now I'll say, I did not pay any attention to my fiber triangle for the first three years I was spinning. Most of the time I'm not paying attention to it unless I notice it's going completely wackadoodle and splitting and going all over the place. Um, and even then you don't need to know the terminology. You just know that your fiber is going a little wackadoodle in your hand, right? So um, your fiber triangle doesn't have to be perfect. You don't really have to worry about it, especially if you're a beginning spinner. I say this in the video, don't focus on this. I don't think personally, you know, my goal is just to have anybody spinning, just make yarn however it works for you. But, um, but I thought I would do this because it is as you get better at spinning and you get more comfortable, it is something you can pay attention to to make your spinning a little more even and easy. So, without further ado, fiber triangle video. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, so let's talk about the fiber triangle, which I'll be honest, I didn't really get for a really long time, but you can kind of see down where my thumb is that there's a bit of a triangle shape there. That's kind of the ideal of how your fiber should look. And I'd say it's pretty regardless of how you're, what you're spinning as far as um, roving or top or bat. The, it, really the triangle is gonna be the same because what's happening is the fiber is pulling away from you. So ideally, you have this beautiful little triangle. Now I spun for a long time and never paid attention to this little triangle. And basically what it is, this is kind of your most active working fiber. So this is the fiber that is next coming into yarn here. And I didn't pay a lot of attention to it for a long time and I had heard people talk about it. Um, but it is something that if you can learn to control does make it easier in your spinning. So maybe not your primary focus when you're first starting because your primary focus is just making yarn however uh, works. But as you get a little bit more comfortable and I'll start spinning and you can see, and I'm at kind of an odd angle. so. Um, but you can see as I go along that the triangle kind of stays and if it starts to split off what I do a lot of times I'll just kind of start working my hand in different directions to make the fiber go back into that lovely triangle and I'm not spinning very fast so you can kind of see but sometimes especially when I'm spinning top I find that parts of it will kind of start to split out like that and it doesn't look so much like a triangle you've got these so I will just use my hands to kind of manipulate it back into that little triangle you can see I just kind of turn it do things like that if all fails and a lot of times with top I don't get the best result with doing that because I just am not great at spinning top. I don't spin it very often. So you can see how that's not very, you can just pull it and kind of restart your, if it gets really split, because what'll happen is if it's really split, which is what happens to me when I'm spinning top, then eventually you're gonna have this chunk that you just can't quite get back in and you keep pulling from over here. And you can see how that can happen. So, like I said, you can either or you can kind of start manipulating with your fingers to get your triangle back to where it should be. And you can see the fibers are literally just like, I am doing a long draw, so I'm just pulling back and I can actually feel the fibers coming out underneath my fingers. My fingers are holding really lightly and I can feel the fibers just sliding past this finger here. And that's ideally what's happening when you're spinning, is you're just letting the wheel, and you can kind of see the wheel's just taking the fiber. So anyway, that's a little bit about, and this is not my most beautiful spinning because I'm trying to talk to you and do this, and I have a very odd angle on my wheel right now. But that's kind of a little bit about the fiber triangle. And it just helps keep your fiber, and you can see I'm kind of trying just to, and I may have lost it. So I just kind of make a little, and then start again. So, there you go. 
That's a little bit. There you go. There's a nice, beautiful triangle again. And then the fibers can just kind of naturally pull off depending on the speed that you have your wheel going at. So, okay. I hope that helped a little bit. Feel free to ask any questions. All right. I'm just going to spin more so you can just kind of watch how I do it without talking for a minute. And I probably should mention now that I'm back at it, that this is the same thing if you're doing short forward, which I'll try to do so you can see. But short forward, you're pulling, and you still have that fiber triangle, although mine's a little ugly right now, but the same idea. And you're still kind of letting the wheel determine how much fiber is getting pulled. You're holding light, and I should have said before, one of the things is that if your fiber is short, you kind of want your hand up towards the top of the triangle so you can get a good control on it. If your fiber is long and you have your hand here, you're just gonna be holding the fiber back. So if you have a longer fiber, your hand's gonna be a little bit further down here in the triangle so that you don't literally just pinch those fibers off and make it harder for them to travel out. So I'm not the best at short forward anymore, even though that's how I learned. It's just not how I spin anymore. And it's really easy to overspin but it's also really easy to underspin long draw. So anyway, back to what I was doing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, I hope that made sense and helped a little bit. Maybe somebody, one person out there, feel free to ask me any questions about it and um, getting to know your fiber triangle. So, what's going on at the mill? I do have a couple videos. I think I have two videos. I was so on it somehow in the past couple weeks. I feel like I took some time off for, I did, I just slammed through Fiber and Yarn Club, took some time off for the holidays, came running back in, did Fiber Club, and then ran back out the door to take a, um, the week off. But it was much needed. And I did manage to get some video in the meantime, so that's great. So I have a couple videos I'll show at the end here that are of me doing, I did a custom order for a friend and then also did Fiber Club. So Fiber Club, everybody should have gotten Fiber Club by now, I think. But if you haven't and you don't wanna know, look away. So here is January Fiber Club. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see there are some hairs in there if you can see kind of sticking up in different directions do you know why that's because this is a blend of it's about a 60 40 blend of wool and it's just a conglomerate of wools that i had and camel what um yeah so this is the first time i've worked with camel on my machinery and actually i don't even think i've spun camel so i've was excited just to have something kind of new and, and different to try out, start the new year out with something a little different. So, and I thought I'd show you Camel. So this is basically how it came to me, except in a big old bag and a ton, but it's very compacted in. So this is straight off the de-herring machine. So Camels are double-coated creatures, meaning they have longer hairs, and then they also have a finer downy undercoat as with most double coated. And so this is not at all how, this has been washed. I'm sure it's been washed, I would guess. It's been run through. Um, there are some fibers you don't wash them by that. I don't think you would generally wash dog before and Angora rabbit you don't wash before. So, but this I would imagine you do. Um, so if I open it up, hopefully you can see that there are some straggling coarser hairs in there. And that is, is part of the guard hair. So this has been dehaired. It's not 100% dehaired. So it still does have, and let's see if I can pull one out. Maybe one that's not white. Let's see if you can see that. I think you can see that. So anyway, 
those are what's going to add a little bit of an itch factor in this wool roving um, and they do continue to as you process it and as you hand spin it and knit it and do everything there will come more fibers falling out but there are probably still going to be some in this yarn so um, the downy undercoat does tend to be a finer fiber and it can be really fine or you know like a baby camel is going to have finer fiber a finer down coat than an older camel um, so I got this from RH Lindsay company. They are, I think, out of Texas. They are basically a wool broker. This came from Mongolia. Um, and I just thought it was really fun. And they are pretty revered animals there. They do have quite a bit of industry based around them. So nice to know that they are also well taken care of. So that is important. Um, and I'm just going to show you because it is not a long fiber their downy undercoat is pretty short so I'm going to try and see where you can see even but I'm gonna say that's me pulling it straight and I'm going with it's like, like an inch to two inches and it can be a little bit longer but it's not gonna be tremendously long so um, I blended this with wool and it's really fun. I think it's fun. We'll see what my fibers let people think. Hopefully they think it's fun too. I do have some left. So if you are interested in it, go on the website and grab some up. I have four ounce balls available. I don't know if it's going to be next to skin once it's done because of some of those guard hairs, but I think it would at least be wonderful for camels are really warm fiber. So it would be wonderful for mittens, just like these. It would actually be really nice for that or um, for a hat, something like that, where it's not gonna be on a super itchy spot. I don't think it's gonna be crazy, but um, but some of those guard hairs might keep it a little bit itchy. So, Or you could be really meticulous and pick them out, but that's not the way I spin. So anyway, if you like this, get on there and grab some up before it is gone. And giveaway, guess what the giveaway is? Uh, and if you are not a hand spinner, I will of course spin it for you, not Five, in five minutes but I will get it to you in a decent amount of time so if you're not a hand spinner you can still enter to win and I thought since I was just on vacation I'd ask you guys to comment below what is your favorite place to go on vacation whether it is so Mitch and I don't do a whole lot on our vacations um, we like to go places where we can really relax so that's how we vacation most of the time how do you vacation? Do you love to go places where you can sightsee, plan the whole day, plan days and be running around? Or do you like to go somewhere chill? So just tell me where your favorite place to go is when you vacation and uh, what you like to do there. Why is it your favorite place, I guess? So anyway, as usual, in by next Tuesday, end of day, I'll pick the winner. Really, YouTube randomizer picks it for me. So that's great. And there you go. Um... I think we're gonna go and take a peek at those videos uh, from the mill, and then I'll be back to say a quick goodbye to you. So enjoy. Hi everyone, it's time for what's going on at the mill. And it probably will be in pieces because that's how I'm rolling right now, but I thought I would show you the uh, this guy for you. So I'm actually doing a little bit of custom processing for a friend and this is a lovely Corydale fleece. I think it's all Corydale and it's carding up beautifully which is always lovely. I know she got this from Black Sheep several years ago and here it is coming out and I just do my custom stuff when I do do it. It just goes into a bag because Quite honestly, putting it in bumps takes a long time, so I don't really offer that, um, especially since I don't really do the custom stuff anymore. So, anyway, there is her Corydale coming out, and we'll move onward here in just a minute. Okay, you guys, so here we are in the Carter, and I thought it's been a while since I've done a video on the Carter, so I might as well let you join in. Um, and the reason I decided to do this blend, which is like different wools, I basically wanted to have a high amount of camel, and I needed wools that were not going to be too much. 
too long, and it was pretty short. It's actually shorter than I thought it was going to be. So I wanted some kind of stickier fibers, toothier fibers that were going to keep the channel together. Although I think it would have been just fine on its own. Right now I'm doing about, and I'm trying to be pretty good about evening this out because it is different fibers that I want the row to be as trying to help it out here. Get it as smooth as possible in a different length. And I've got to run around the back, make sure everything's good, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like here in just a second. Okay, so there it is on the carter. And I'll show you guys here what we're looking like around the other end. And you can kind of see it coming out in there. And here it is coming out as roving. And it's got a really pretty color to it. It's very camely in color, um, which is nice. All the wools that I blended are kind of equaling out to that same color so and it is really very downy feeling i grabbed it this morning i was like oh yeah i forgot how it felt so anyway there's that going and on the other side here i've got some roving going through so we'll get over there in just a sec dark halsey last little batch of halsey going through so that's kind of what we're working on fiber cloth is my priority for the week because um, I've got to get it parted picked parted and packaged Which don't underestimate how long that can take so I'm gonna get back to it guys without stepping all over cat. Here it is from the side here. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those videos. I will be back in the mail hardcore next time. I should have some spinning videos. I have to sit down and make a really good plan for the next uh, month or two, which is my goal over the next couple days. I need to do quite a bit of skirting. And, um, but I'll be back in and we'll have some new fibers and yarns coming out in the new year for sure. Um, in the next couple of weeks. So anyway, on that note, we're going to say goodbye because I'm going to go home and maybe, whoop, there's Wishy, skirt some wool. Um, because I have so much and way too much of it is in the shop right now. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned something new, laughed, I don't know, whatever it is. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for taking the time and as always stay healthy, take care of your neighbors, be kind, and I will see you soon.